Ska Keller, Alexis Tsipras, Guy Verhofstadt, Martin Schulz and Jean-Claude Juncker. Maybe some of these names ring a bell. They were the very first candidates to run for the presidency of the European Commission in 2014 under provisions in the Lisbon Treaty. They were nominated by their political group in the European Parliament to be the face of its campaign or their super candidate Europe-wide. Giving European citizens a say on who should sit at the head of the table of the executive branch of the European institutions through the Spitzenkandidaten process. Before that, the president of the European Commission was designated behind closed doors by the European Council, composed of the heads of state and government of all EU member states. But even after nomination, the president has to be confirmed by MEPs. After hours of grilling of the proposed candidate, the parliament votes for or against him or her. If confirmed, the newly appointed president takes office for five years. But what does the president do when in office? He decides on the organization of the European Commission, allocates portfolios to commissioners, one per member state, which he can change at any time. The president also determines the commission's policy agenda, which best defends the general European interest. The president works in close collaboration with commissioners. They meet once a week and are known as the college. It decides on the strategic objectives, draws up the annual work programme and is collectively responsible before the European Parliament. Finally, the President represents the Commission during European Council meetings, G7 and G20 summits, bilateral summits with third countries and during major debates in the European Parliament. It seems to be